Uh, Senator Mark McSharry. The question is that the bill be now read a second time, and I call on Senator Mark McSharry to speak. And Mark, you have ten minutes. Thanks very much, uh, Alaska here. Look, uh, I welcome the Minister for the House, and uh, glad to have the opportunity to put forward this bill this evening. I want to thank uh, Senator Layden, Senator O'Brien for co-sponsoring it. Uh, I know this is an issue very close to all of our hearts in this house. At least Senator Gilroy there who has done a great deal of work with regards to the Health Committee. Uh, and indeed as a health professional himself, uh, is no stranger to the issues that I'm raising here today. Minister, I want to welcome yourself. Uh, I know Minister Lynch is not uh, available, and I wish her well. I hope she is uh, recovering well. Um, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, however, that perhaps uh, Minister Riley couldn't be available. Now, in fairness, he is very good at the House. and does make himself available very regularly to us. He was here earlier today. Uh, but given the importance of the issue, I would have preferred that. Notwithstanding that, delighted to have your good self, and I know that you'll take the bill for the merits with which, uh, and the spirit with which uh, it's been put forward. Um, last year, uh, I published a, a, a a document that Senator Gillard indeed be familiar with called Actions Speak Louder Than Words. Uh, and I suppose the, 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 uh, the, the common denominator of that uh, particular policy document uh, was an admission that politicians don't have the solutions to the silent crisis. Uh, and the endless rhetoric that we all participate in in these houses, when there's an instance of suicide, loss of life through suicide, or when there's a report, as there was in recent weeks, to do with the mental health service nationally. You know, the indignant rhetoric of all of us in demanding that action be taken and this can't continue and so on uh, is deafening at times. But then when it comes to the political leadership and the political will to take the appropriate measures, we all fall short. That's not to overly criticise this government any more than it is to absolve previous administrations. Uh, so what that document did was put forward a structure that we believe needs to be put in place and resources that we believe need to be put in place so that the experts, people from Senator Gilroy's profession, the experts in this field, like those in the National Office for Suicide Prevention, like those at Pieta House, like those in the Samaritans and Console and the various other organisations, both voluntary and professional, throughout the country, so that they can begin to peel back the blindfold on the phenomena of loss of life through suicide. Those measures were going to cost in the region of 90 million euro. And where would one possibly find that money at a time when we're trying to nurse so many deficits throughout all the departments and so many cutbacks? Well, the first thing we need in order to do it is the political will to do it, the courage to say, you know what, we are losing the population of an entire village every year from this. Put another way, it's like saying two jumbo jets filled with people are going to crash next year, and strangely, we know where they're going to crash and to an extent when they're going to crash. We know what the problem is, but yet we're not prepared to tangibly do what is required in order to prevent that from taking place. Now, that's inexcusable in everybody's book, but yet we continue to, and again, it's not to overly focus criticism on this government or absolve other governments, uh, but we tend to commend ourselves on all the good work that we're doing. It's great. We have a vision for change. It's a great plan. We all signed up for it cross-party. There was scarcely a policy other than corporation banks in the history of the state that has such support. But yet, it is the first target when it comes to gathering up a few shillings to fill a hole in another aspect of the department, or indeed in another department. Uh, you know, we have had ring-fenced monies over the years for mental health and suicide prevention measures. However, buried within the bowels of the HSE, uh, it's subservient to the budgetary constraints and challenges of that organisation, and inevitably takes a lower place on the pecking order than it should. What this bill is about is trying, and it was suggested in our policy document, that we would look at an area where there was scope, perhaps the off-sales area. There may be some scope in it. So the bill doesn't precisely mirror the proposal in the document, but does reflect the spirit of it. Uh, it put forwards uh, a levy, uh, which would be applied uh, within the off-sales sector, uh, based on volume and strength, uh, would be applied by the retailer, uh, collected by the revenue commissioners and would go in specifically to the mental health fund uh, which would be established uh, under this bill. That money would then be available for the rollout of policy uh, measures such as those suggested and indeed the accelerated rollout of a vision for change because the 90 million uh, was only some. The balance would be very significant. In fact, we calculate up to 200 million uh, which would be available then 
for the accelerated rollout of a vision for change. Minister, I know it's not specifically your portfolio, but I need hardly underline the challenges throughout this area. The hostels report of recent week, the Mental Health Commission, we have a, a report into the Galway and Roscommon uh, issues in terms of the mental health services there. Senator Gilroy will be a lot more fluent than I in the individual cases throughout the country, but each corner of the country has their own story to tell in how we collectively have failed in this regard. This has tried to come up with an innovative way, not to uh, issue a tax on people, not to beat up the retailer who's working so hard, not to beat up the alcohol trade generally, which in fairness, apart from uh, the fact that it can be said that alcohol is a contributing factor to mental health issues and indeed suicide, so are others, such as uh, relationship breakdown, losing one job, depression, uh, and many, many other social factors that contribute to it. But to say, we, with the cooperation, of the drinks industry, with the cooperation of the retail off trade, uh, would like to harness what our research has shown is the goodwill of individuals who, when seeking to enjoy themselves responsibly, may be prepared to give that little bit more in the knowledge that it would be specifically ring fenced. And I know we don't have uh, 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 we don't have an example to point to in this regard. There is no precedence within the exchequer to say, well, that goes directly to that, and that is where it stays. But so what? Why don't we test it? Why don't we try it? Why don't we put it in place and see the benefits it would reap? Naturally, um, retailers feel challenged by this. Indeed, in our own area, where Cahir, look, you are yourself uh, in the northwest, we have the border area. Indeed, at committee stage, if this were accepted, I believe additional measures could be put in there to give added protections to the retailers in that area with the competition uh, of cross-border and a different regime there. And of course, that would have to be done. Uh, there's definitely the fact that people, uh, to their wits' end and to the pin of their collar from uh, a, a, an economic perspective, with the effects of austerity, are entitled to enjoy a glass of wine if they want at weekends and don't particularly want to have to pay more. But in the context of, say, an extra 25 cent on premium lark or an extra 80 cent on a bottle of wine, an extra 16 cent per measure uh, on a whiskey or a vodka, a relatively modest amount in the context of the overall price, yet the contribution it would make in terms of our mental health services, in terms of the infrastructure that's required there, the staffing and the measures that were outlined by Action Speak Louder Than Words in creating the new structure and other measures for suicide prevention would be immeasurable in terms of what it would save for the state and instead of the haphazard form of funding we've had for mental health services, instead of the uncertainty of whether funds will be available, will they be taken away, uh, and the fact that a vision for change remains an aspiration, which, despite the best efforts, I'm sure, of Minister Lynch and her colleagues, is something that she had to admit on Morning Ireland this week, will not be implemented in the lifetime of this administration. Now, that's not acceptable, in my view. We can make a difference here. We can choose to do this. And yes, I agree. The best we could hope for is to bring about half of the people with us on, on Facebook. Uh, indeed, I was getting scurrilous attacks from certain quarters and great support from others. But on balance, this is a tangible measure that can be implemented, that can ring fence funding, and I believe society as a whole would thank us. And it's not about being popular. It's about doing the right thing. Now, I know I'm not to preempt your own fine words when they come. There may be suggestions here that there are European directives uh, that may in some way impede upon the possibility to do this. I agree that some of those things might be debatable. Indeed, we sought legal advice of our own in terms of senior counsel. We think government should test this. We believe that it is possible. And indeed, uh, just to, to give one example, in the past we had, uh, in terms of the betting area, uh, we had the potential to apply a tax in a betting office, yet not apply it uh, if betting uh, at the dog's track or, or at the racetrack. Uh, equally, 
uh, there is the issue here where we're looking to apply something to the offer, where there is scope, in fairness. There are historically low levels. It's not, again, just to reiterate, specifically to hammer the alcohol retail sector off to, but there is scope there in terms of the historically low prices. It could be looked at again if we pass second stage, that at committee stage we could see about an existing proportion of the excise paid by the publicans on on-trade, or indeed a proportion of their commercial rates bill would be ring-fenced and put into this fund uh, also. So this bill, uh, and a lot of work has gone into it, and I know Senator Gilroy knows that, and a lot of work went into action, speak louder than words, has tried to come up with a tangible solution uh, for the government of the day to embrace and celebrate. There is nothing I would like more, Minister, than you and your colleagues to take this accept it at second stage, make changes, and see some I've outlined that need to be made myself, uh, and ye also uh, to bring the wisdom of the likes of Senator Gilroy and others uh, to make it a little better. Yes, it's new. Yes, it's pioneering. But I believe it to be worthwhile. I believe it to be innovative. And more than anything else, I believe this can tangibly reduce the instance of suicide by 30% in 10 years, and unlike the prediction made by Minister Lynch, through no fault of her own earlier in the week, it can accelerate the rollout of a vision for change so that your government can take full credit for its completion instead of depending on the goodwill of the next one to carry it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Now, Senator